You know, there's a lot of situational ethics ways we can reason how we can do things. But they learn just enough of every little topic to be dangerous. Forty thousand dollars for a camera. Yes, I'm not saying it is intentional or unintentional, but. I mean, I could show you a dent. A I video mean, pan isn't that? necessarily always. Fifty dollars for a dent. That guy got four hundred. I'm like, and he He's got toothpaste on it that's it, curing it, out when we're done. Drywall, right? Some pastos. <laughs> sure. And uh, you know what is that training worth? Long term. A lot. Like, it's it's a lot more than a four. It's all right. Leave that out. What's up? What's up? Hey. So yeah. this is the Masters PDR Guild. Uh, this. But here's the problem with the internet. Everybody is looks big and bad behind a keyboard. Okay, so people say dumb things that they don't ever say in person. That's another topic. Yeah, you look yeah. But anyways, so let's say on the internet some guy comes out and says, Wow, I just discovered this awesome tab. And he posts it, posts a picture of it, and he's on level thirty one on the ladder of a hundred steps, yeah, let's yeah, say, yeah, okay? okay. Then everybody, bunch of guys out there that are all 20 late, 26, all the way down to the noobs. They don't know what level that guy's at, so they're like, oh, this is awesome. I'm going to go buy this tab because Billy Joe Johnson said this thing's awesome. But here's the problem. Some of us that are up on the higher numbers of the ladder, 88, 89, whatever, I'm just giving an arbitrary number. We it. went by level 31 five years ago, and yeah. people are just now on social media discovering things that we have. That doesn't mean that... I'm awesome. It just means that I've been around and I've been striving. You know, some of these guys have just started going to the mobile tech show the last couple of years. I've yeah, been to I'm, every single one. I'm one of them. Randy Hobson and I have been going. I think the only two dent guys, and Terry Siegel's been to 15. I think the only two have been to every single show since Clearwater. So we have been way ahead of the learning curve. I get it. For years, okay? Yeah. So this stuff's new and exciting, but when I go to the show, I'm like, well, been there, done that. This one, oh, maybe this is a slight improvement over mine. But there's almost nothing new. But it's repackaged and it sells well. But so why I'm saying lots of guys have learned lots of things going to the show, watching the tool review guys, going to advanced classes. Um, all of this stuff has been out there, and some of us that have been doing it kind of giggle like, but it's wow, everybody thinks this is new, and it is to some people, but to some of us, that have been doing it, we'd kind of like to sell that back in the industry and say, well, look, here's here's how I got where I was. I was doing this, and I've worked this curve, but I can also tell you that maybe eight out of ten of those tools you think are awesome are not really necessary in your growth curve. But again, dent guys are like herding cats. Nobody listens to anybody. That's why we can't yeah. get an industry association that does anything. Well, look, you know, no, no, We're no, all what? mavericks. We make too much money. We <laughs> hey, think what, we're awesome. What happens during birth? I think, what I think you're awesome. Birth? I am. What happens during birth? Yeah. A baby comes out. Freaking mess. Oh, it's disgusting. It's a mess. I did not even want to I, I, I've been through explore fire my wife ever Saw again it. after seeing uh, what happened. shut up about that. That's horrifying. I mean, yeah, but you end up having another one. Yeah. But anyway, five kids, five messes. Yeah. Now, there are some people, there are a lot of companies out there, we're in the birthing stage of PDR. And it may stay there for the next 20 years. We may go through nine months of labor before any of this, we may go through nine years or 10, 20 more years of labor before an, in, for an entity steps up and puts a complete organization, but it's gonna happen political. It's gonna happen, it's gonna probably happen political and we're gonna be forced, shoved, laws forced down our throat. Now I know an individual that's gonna be going to be lobbyist for the paintless debt removal full time in the industry within the next couple of years. He's going to be in Washington, D.C. He's okay. going to become a lobbyist for and, painless and, debt removal. And who's paying for that? He's paying for it out of his own pocket. Okay, well, that's pretty amazing. Yeah, and that is, and that's what we need. Uh, now, and as someone who is a debt guy, sure. who knows the industry, he knows the brokerage side of it, he knows the insurance side because he used to work for the insurance company sure so, i mean there's a lot of positive things that well, are coming that's out that's similar to what i'm transitioning into yeah and i'll keep a little bit under the covers but i mean you know for instance a car that most dent guys would ride a hail car for seven thousand dollars well um when it's presented to an insurance company with overhead and profit added to it uh when it's presented that that's not true pre-loss if you are going to cut my roof off or if you're going to put mud in my panels and 
So this was a test case for the automotive PDR industry versus insurance companies. That $7,000 estimate got paid out at a little over $31,000 on a 2016 Dodge Ram. So what does that say? It says that Diminished really... Diminished value. Right, and the whole point is it's supposed to go back to... Customer. The word indemnification means the customer is made whole. The insurance companies never indemnify anybody. Never, ever, unless they're forced to by an attorney or somebody else. So what I'm getting at is things are coming to the industry, okay. even to the auto. They're going to trickle down into the auto. I will be part of it where things will change dramatically in the automotive industry for those that want to participate in that. For those that want to go out and set up storms with banners and wave deductibles and do whatever, hey, they continue to do that. Although they'll find out now that some state laws are going to be exposed where they're going to be stopped from waving deductibles if it's illegal in those states. But you can do whatever you want on the I'm, street, but would you rather do a car that... I'm guilty. Okay. okay. I'm guilty. <laughs> okay. That's fine. I'm not here to debate that. What I'm saying is, though, you can do that car for $7,000, or you can uh, show the insurance company the actual consumer law and get a check for $31,000 and do what you want with your vehicle. So who's working smarter there? All right. Now, I'm just throwing out numbers, guys, and I'm not dangling a piece of imaginary bait. I promise you these concepts are coming to our industry. It, it won't change the guys that want to do what they do. But no. think about the guys that want to think, want to work a little smarter, not harder. So and that's at my age. That's why you know, I, the, I talk to some of you guys down at Mobile Tech, and you guys are doing 15, 20, 30 cars a day. I'm like, how many cars I fixed today? Three, at the most. <laughs> right, but it's hard to fix cars when you're in the car with me, unless we start fixing the headliner right here again on yeah. the roof. You know, it's funny because I did a, uh, I saw. The, I saw video after video after video of jumping on cars, jumping on roofs of cars, and they some of the protests. I put. I mean, oh, I and, saw that. Dude, what people do out there, like, where they fell, jump across he fell, cars. He jumped man. four or five times on the roof, walked down the windshield, slipped and fell, and busted his tail on the hood. <laughs> it was hilarious. I'm like, <laughs> and, and you know what? They don't even get arrested. That's crazy. I anyway. Uh, hopefully they will, but. Uh, we'll I wish there was like a PDR jail. I think all of us at one time or another would have to serve some time in there. Yeah, like I said, if it's a if the if our industry was the drywall industry, I think a lot of guys, in myself being included, I probably would have served a little bit of time in prison for uh, not doing good work. <laughs> Yeah, are people drilling in intrusion beams, not caring. Yeah, and, you know, yeah, and I get their mindset. Their mindset is the dealer's paying me $40 to fix this tent. I'm going to drill right into that brace. And you know the but difference? But it's still... Getting back to the level of the 1 to 100. Sucks liability into our lives. Yes. Getting back to the level of 1 to 100. Okay, now, about four, three years ago, I came across a dent. I charged like $765 for this dent on a 2000... Used for example purposes only. Well, this dent was uh, attempted by two other dent guys here locally in Springfield. Uh, a buddy of mine, well, he, <clears throat> soon to become a buddy of mine. I okay, didn't know that at sure. the time. And another guy, he's 21, 25 years in sure, business. Sure. He attempted it, and I talked to the customer. The insurance company uh, ended up, he come to me, and the insurance company worked it out. I mean, I sent a bill. They gave me the, they gave me the check. They gave the customer a check. The customer. Did the first two guys get paid for not fixing it? No. Okay, well, uh, they that's didn't. good. They, they didn't. And, okay. you know, they didn't mess it up at all. For it. I said, I got so-and-so. I got $750 for it. I said, could have you fixed Stay it? Stay tuned for more stuff. We are going to flesh out what a door ding certification is. No, no, they're, they're, they don't just give them a hand out. They give them a hand up. Sure. You need a job. The guys. I mean, right. it's, it's a decent technician. And this is the way we did it. It took about a year. But 90% of his work, 